Okay, everyone, this is gonna be our entry-level Bulldozer 101. This is a remake of our video we did about two years ago. So this is our 2020 version, uh, really taking some feedback from you, comments, things like that. Uh, so kind of go over the basic controls. Again, this will be the very beginning. So if you are a very new operator looking at getting into it, this video will be for you. Uh, first things first, as with all my videos, I say I'm not an expert, not claiming to be. Uh, just gonna kind of show you what I've learned out here and what we've heard from others, seen other people do on our sites. Uh, the other piece is we've already done our pre-op inspection. We do have a separate video on that. So if you do wanna see a bulldozer pre-op video, uh, just go ahead and we'll link to that and show you below. But let's go ahead and get in the machine and we'll show you some of the controls. And you'll see my variable speed setting ramps up. I'm gonna come around and do a 180 to go the other direction. First thing most important is three points of contact anytime you're getting in and out of equipment. Uh, surprisingly, or maybe not surprisingly, most incidents that happen on job site are actually from operators jumping off tracks, things like that. Dozers are kind of awkward, so there are always the bars on there. Just make sure you're taking your time to get up and in the equipment. Okay. All dozers have uh, a door lock on them. So, well, two things. First, anytime you're getting in or out of a piece of equipment, I always recommend having that door locked open. You'll see some operators kind of partially open that thing. The problem with that is when you partially open it, if you start getting into it, one, there is handles on the door. So I've seen this happen before where someone starts to fall, they grab it, the door's not locked. So it falls, you know, pulls right towards them or wind. Uh, I've been knocked in the back of the head several times myself mainly on the excavator, uh, so make sure they're locked. Now, when you get into a dozer, again, all they all have locks to lock them open because some operators may want to operate with the doors open, so they have locks in place. So the Komatsu, we're running a Komatsu D61 dozer. There's releases on both sides up there. Okay, so seat belt then. Okay, seat belt. Always put a seatbelt on. I don't care. I'm going to get comments on here from pro operators. I've been doing it for 30 years saying they never worn a seatbelt. You're not going to get me sold on not wearing a seatbelt. Uh, you're in a protective cab. The cab is not protective if you're not attached to it. So any operator that tells you seatbelts, you don't, you don't wear them, shouldn't wear them, don't listen to them. They're, it's just there's a reason they're in there. It's the same thing in a car. I mean, you, your car is not going to, that shell is not going to protect you if you're not secured into that. So don't let any operator tell you no. So now with that, turn it on. on uh, again, today we're running a Komatsu D61 dozer. I'm gonna go over controls here in a somewhat generic method, uh, just because it's, I want it to apply to really any bulldozer. So with this one, Komatsu, any piece of heavy equipment, you're always gonna turn the key just to turn the, uh, the systems on. Don't ever just turn and crank it right away. Uh, you always want to get this. These are very complicated machines. So you want the system to be able to boot up, see if there's any warnings, indicators, anything like that. Sometimes there might uh, be a warm up process in there too. If there is a uh, uh, engine, a, a heater on there or anything like that, or uh, glow plugs on some of the older machines, you're going to want to let that run. So it's all good. I'm going to turn the key to start it up. Okay, so after you immediately start it up, uh, and before I'm really doing anything, I'm always checking my gauges. So making sure there's no error codes, anything like that. Uh, Komatsu machines are fairly simple. Uh, you'll see it right away if there's anything that, uh, if there is an alert, they'll actually pop up something in front of you if there's an error code or anything like that. Outside of that, you're gonna be checking your fuel levels. Uh, how much fuel, uh, if you're using diesel exhaust, making sure you have enough for the entire shift. I can see my fuel gauge here. I can see my diesel exhaust. Uh, fluid on the other side there, so everything is good to go on there, and I don't have any error codes or anything like that. Now, let's go over some of the controls. Uh, we talked about seatbelt, already went off on that first thing. The next for a safety device, safety lock levers. Now, Komatsu has an, I, uh, I'm trying to think what other manufacturers do it, several of them do, will have each door. Uh, we'll have it and I really like these because they're a great visual from outside the equipment if someone is outside and doesn't know if the equipment is live or not. So these will actually come up right in front of a door and they have a big red piece on the end of them so you can see them. When those are down, nothing's going to do anything right now. Everything uh, is shut down so it's in safe mode. 
Now, CAT has a parking button that you'll see with a parking indicator. Uh, and again, you'll see some other bulldozer manufacturers have that where it may just be a push button. Uh, again, not, I prefer to have a lever. They can actually see a visual, but you're always gonna, you're not gonna be able to start the machine if, uh, well, it's gonna start with that already engaged. But the other thing I'll say when you're starting, make sure if it doesn't start, it won't start in gear. So if you have your left joystick is in forward or reverse, it's not gonna crank. It may tell you that, or you may just look like a newbie idiot on a job site trying to figure out why your machine won't start. Usually it means it's in gear, uh, either in gear or the lock levers are engaged. The next thing I wanna go over is the, uh, for a safety, I like to go over the safety devices first. So I went over lock, I went over seat, but seat belt, lock levers. Then you've got a decelerate pedal. That's my right foot pedal. Uh, it's a decelerator. It's kind of like the opposite. It's basically an engine clutch. It will bring the engine down to idle. That's what's going to stop this machine at any point. So that's why you always, anytime you're shifting, I recommend doing it. Anytime before I engage safety lock levers, it's kind of that fail safe on there. Most of the newer dozers have gone to a single pedal design. And what I mean by that is uh, this right now, bringing it down to idle is going to stop my machine. You will notice some larger dozers that even at neutral, it will still slowly move along. So usually there's a second pedal. Uh, I call it a brake brake because it literally will actually uh, put a, apply a brake to the track so it stops the machine from moving. The single pedal manufacturers, which I really like, and Komatsu is one of them, might not be able to see it with this camera, but behind my decelerate pedal, there's a little yellow uh, cushion or button behind it. It looks like a cushion, it's actually a button. If I push it all the way in on my right foot, it goes about another half an inch. That is actually the brake brake. That will actually apply a mechanical brake to the machine to stop it. You will not, well, I should say you should never, I can't think of a time I've actually had to use that because bringing it down to idle is going to stop most dozers. Uh, but it's there. If you're on a slope or something, you'll notice if you bring it down to idle, your machine may slowly drift backwards. Well, if it bothers you, you can apply that brake brake by pushing all the way down. Other than that, uh, your feet, your left foot, there's just a foot, uh, you know, a foot rest there. That's really, you're usually just using your right foot on the dozer. So, and to demonstrate that, I'll throttle this up right now. On the left is your throttle over here. Uh, so there's always, again, Komatsu's on the left. I've seen throttle positions differently. Almost all machines will not move at idle. Uh, that's another kind of a fail safe too, I should say, is that uh, if you engage everything, the machine's not gonna go anywhere. So all the way up to max, you generally, uh, I always recommend running it at full throttle. A dozer is only as good as how much power is getting delivered to those hydraulics, to the tracks, everything like that. So you wanna have it at full throttle and then you can manage that either with the speed settings we'll go over or that foot control. So now with my throttle all the way up, if I push this pedal down, you see it brings me down to idle. So if I pull back, it'll go back all the way up. So I'm gonna hold it down right now. Now again, to go live with it, I always recommend having your foot down on that pedal. Right now I'm in neutral, so it wouldn't, shouldn't go anywhere, but it, I get in the habit for a new operator, make sure your foot is on that pedal before you make any moves to, in direction, um, anything that potentially could be a safety issue there, just have the foot pedal down and be stopped. Now I'm gonna lean forward, these are independent of each other um, in Komatsu. You know, the right one controls the right joystick, left controls the left joystick. Uh, so it really doesn't matter if you do it at the same time. I'm used to just engaging them. Generally though, if you're gonna have those up, that means you're ready to go. Seatbelt's on, no one is standing up on your tracks, no one's near your machine, the machine is live right now. So I think it's really important that that's, that's why I like the visual from outsiders. If they see in and see those bars up, I would not be approaching. If you ever needed to come talk to an operator, I strongly suggest that they put it in neutral and disengage both safety lock levers. Right now that machine won't move. So back up. Outside of that, before I go into the joysticks, primary controls, we went over to the display. Obviously every manufacturing can be a little bit different. Just get to know uh, what the settings are, what the readings are on this. I'm not gonna go over all the individual pieces because it's, it's very much manufacturer dependent. You know, Komatsu has all their lighting controls on the left there. There's uh, independent control for the front lights and one for the rear. Uh, this one, they have a switch over on the right here that is a, an additional heater that's uh, kind of a defrost heater that's underneath the, I think it's under the seat somewhere, it blows out from underneath there. And then you've got all the settings. There's buttons down here. There's a power mode, there's an economy mode. There's different ways to adjust your uh, a variable speed setting on it. Uh, so there's a lot of different features on most of the newer machines that you're just gonna wanna be familiar with. 
um, that I'm not going to go over into because that's dependent on the model you have. Uh, so with that said, and then on the left side, we've got climate control. So Komatsu's got a manual climate control on the left side, heat, air conditioning, things like that. Uh, we talked about throttle knob is right here. It's always going to be up. Joysticks will go over in a second. And then on the right side is we've got a, the ripper control right here. So I don't, we don't have a ripper on this one, but if you did, this is the, usually there's an accessory uh, joystick on any bulldozer that's gonna operate if there's something behind the dozer, that's what's gonna operate that. When it's not, it doesn't do anything, so. And then above my head, you can't really see much, but the only thing on the Komatsu, our windshield wiper controls are up above my head on the right uh, for all the different wipers. And then most important is my radio up there. I don't ever run it, but for all of you operators, I'm sure run that a lot, so you got a radio there. Again, the newer machines, I think most new operators are surprised. Uh, yeah, if you can learn an old school machine and figure it out, great. Uh, the newer machines, I think what most equipment manufacturers have learned, the more comfortable they make those operators, the more, you know, the safer they are, the more efficient they are. So that's why you're seeing a lot of these machines nowadays have a lot of comforts built into them. We're not trying to spoil a new generation. I know a lot of old school operators will rag on the newer guys that are coming in here, I, it's just about being more safer and more productive. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. So you'll see air ride seats in these, you know, a lot of things that are not in the older machines. But again, if you can have it, have it. I think it's good for everybody. So, so now with that said, let's go over the primary, the joysticks, which these will not really change regardless of the manufacturer. Your right is always your blade control. Your left is always your driving. So you got blade control on the right, driving on the left okay that's standard across i have not seen any other dozers that ran it any other way now within those actual there might be little different configurations but generally on my right if i pull back it will raise my blade up and with any hydraulic as hard as you pull that that's how hard it's going to go all hydraulics are going to have kind of a hard stop built in there it's not so don't ever some new operators are worried that they're going to do some damage you can pull it all the way up hit that hard stop i wouldn't recommend it all the time i mean there is a end point to that hydraulic cylinder that's probably not great to repeatedly hit it um, but just understand you're not going to do any permanent damage so that controls it so pulling back goes up pushing forward brings that blade back down so that's my back and forth on that right if i go left or right it dips the blade down so this dozer is a six-way pitch blade so i'll show you i'm going over all those so left or right, you'll see my blade tips will go down one side or the right side, one way or the other. So that's left and right. Uh, and then you've got, uh, there's thumb controls on this that'll actually swing the blade. So on the Komatsu, my right thumb on here, on the lower, there's a switch. If I go left, it goes left. If I pull back on it, I'm sorry, if I push up on it, it goes to the right. If I pull back on it, it swings to the left. And again, this will stop as well. It's not gonna hit the tracks. New operators sometimes are concerned about that. It won't do it. It's going to stop before that. So one way or the other like that. Now, I've also seen that on some dozer brands, other brands, you might actually twist the right joystick to do that same effect. So again, little things like that will be different, but the overall blade control is going to be on that. Now, that's most almost every single blade is going to be a six-way pitch. So you've got up and down, you've got tips left and right, and then you've got your swing left and right. That's your six that I would say, I've never been in a dozer, it didn't have all. Additionally, some will actually roll the blade. So you might be able to actually pitch it forward, pitch it back, um, or some controls. I'm trying to think some of the, there, there's other, if you guys run other types of dozers, uh, by all means, comment below on other things you've seen, but those are the standard. Outside of that, there's a float button on the top for the Komatsu. This basically disengages the hydraulic pressure on the up and down, so it'll allow you to back drag. I'm gonna go over that a little bit later. Source subject, I'll tell you this right now, for any experienced operators, I know you don't like back dragging. Uh, I'll tell you my same thing I said, I think it's got a time and place. The manufacturers wouldn't have put it in there if it wasn't there for a reason. So, But to float, basically set that blade in the ground. And then if I, for the Komatsu, if I just hold this right thumb up there and put that joystick forward, you'll see I get a float symbol on my display and then it moves up to the corner. You never, ever, ever want to be driving in float forward. It is purely for back dragging. So you're going to basically disengage it so you can back drag and the thing will float just the weight of that blade. And then to take it out of float on the Komatsu, you just pull back just a little bit, it beeps. And I, that symbol went away and now the hydraulics are back on. So that's my right. Now to drive on a bulldozer, I usually, generally don't 
want to have it all the way up, if you can see over my shoulder there, it just blocks your view. It's not the safest when you're going on a job site. I usually recommend, you know, I don't know, a foot or two off the ground. You know, whatever you're comfortable with, it depends on the terrain you're going into, um, but usually a foot or two off the ground is what you want to be. So that's right. Now, left is your driving. Again, fairly simple. Uh, dozers are not generally that complex. They get forward, neutral, reverse. So on this, they shift. And this is, again, pretty much every dozer I've been in has it like that. Um, again, my foot is on the pedal. You never want to be doing this when the throttle's up and your foot's off because it'll move. I always recommend stopping the machine before you shift it. So forward, neutral, reverse, it's just three little clicks like that. To steer it is just left or right, uh, one way or the other. If I go all the way hard left, dozers nowadays will literally do a 360. They will literally, the one track will go forward, the other will go reverse. Not ideal, you generally wanna try and widen that turn as much as possible because every, you'll, I'll do that later and you'll see it really breaks up the ground, disturbs it, plus you're scooping in a lot of material into your tracks, which is not ideal. Um, now the other variation I've seen on dozers for steering is, again, this goes left or right. Some of those, the same thing will turn the joystick left or right, similar to what I said on the right. That's how you can steer it as well. And then you've got speed control. Um, uh, again, very, there's different speed settings. We do a variable one on the Komatsu, so these, there's nothing to down right here. Now on my display, you'll see I got an F and an R for forward and reverse there. And as I push up, it'll go up. As I push down, it goes and it brings it back down. Obviously, the higher the number, the, uh, the faster the speed. So you'll notice the reverse is always going to be higher. Uh, usually, you're always going to go faster in reverse than in forward because you're grading forward. You make up time in reverse. Um, so that's why you see on that. Now, Komatsu, we're on a variable setting, which if you can see the display in the bottom here, you'll see it's got the full length. There is a, spe a setting, one, two, or three, that you can change it in your settings. So when you click that, it goes basically, it's like a first gear, second gear, third gear. It's not actually gears, they're settings, but it, it is equivalent of when people say they're running it in second or whatever. That's typically what that means, is they're setting in a speed. It does probably make it easier for an experienced operator because you don't have to manage it. For new operators though, I like the finesse to be able to go all the way down as low as it'll go to start. So that's that. So we've got all that. Um, I think I went over all those controls. Now I'm just gonna do a little bit of driving, show you some of the basics on here. So with my foot down, I'm gonna push this into forward. You'll see again, I always start off at the slowest speed setting, bring that thing all the way down or in first gear, whatever. And then you'll see, again, I don't have to have my hand on anything. Just letting my foot slowly off that pedal is it's all I'm doing right now is managing my speed with that foot pedal. So I, at least to go. Now, what I would say from there, you don't necessarily wanna use this as a constant speed adjustment. That's usually, again, if you, when I spoke earlier, usually you want to keep the maximum throttle to those, uh, the hydraulics. So managing speed is with this. Now that's forward. If I stop, pull it in reverse on the Komatsu machine, the backup camera changes over to reverse so I can actually see right out the back. Again, this also is another one that we get a lot of feedback. Some people are so adamant about not relying on the camera. Again, technology is a good thing. This camera right now gives me better visibility than me doing this. I can't see nearly as much as I can see with that. Now with that said, it is a technology. You don't ever want to solely rely on a technology. Uh, but so I think it's a matter of looking over shoulders. Komatsu has a mirror up above my head as well that I can look back. But you slowly look over your shoulder when my foot's off, managing the same speed. But I generally am primarily focused. They put that camera strategically here. One, it's got a great view, but two, it is in line with my blade tips. So I can pretty much scan everything right here and seeing everything. With that said, you're supplementing by looking over your shoulder just to make sure you're not missing anything out of your, peri your peripheral vision there. Uh, but don't, again, I think technology is a good thing. You'll get a lot of old school operators that will be very upset if you're relying on things like that. It goes back to my thing that machines evolve, they've gotten smarter, they've gotten better. So take advantage of that. It's, it's intended to make us all safe, just don't rely solely on it. So let's go back forward. Now foot's off, again to steer it, you'll see if I go like that, goes left, go like that, goes right. You'll see I'm not doing anything with my right hand because I'm not touching my blade. As an experienced operator, you're gonna have both hands on both joysticks. Right now though, I like to show people that it's the minimal. If I, I can leave my right hand off, I'm doing everything. So now I start pushing on the up button and you'll see my variable speed setting ramps up. Uh, 
I'm going to come around and do a 180 to go the other direction. Now you'll see a nice gentle turn here. So the key is a lot of new operators with hydraulics, they like to stab, they like to do this. And I'm really making it more pronounced to show you. Hydraulics in any machine uh, do not like that. Smooth. If I am just barely holding that over, you'll see my turn is pretty steady right there. And again, if I go hard right, you'll see that one goes in reverse. Um, there's actually in Komatsu's, you can feel it. So I push it all the way, it's sitting right there. If I go just a little bit harder right, it'll actually do the reverse right there. So you just kind of want to know that setting at, uh, right there. So I'm going to go ahead and come forward here and line up. And we'll stop right here. Okay, now that we're ready to go. Uh, now the this is a 101 video. I'm, we're trying to, we've done past videos. I wanted to keep this video very much basic controls. I'm not gonna go into much for techniques here because that's where we'll shoot another video that will go more into grading, things like that. But I'm just gonna do a, one or two passes here. Anytime you're learning, uh, two things I'm gonna, I wanna tell you. One, you are not gonna watch any video on YouTube that's gonna teach you and you're not gonna be a proficient operator in any piece of machine. So uh, I'll, I'll cut that suspense from you. Don't watch, don't think you're gonna watch a video and be a good operator. Number two, how you are gonna become a good operator is get your butt in the seat. Uh, seat time is about the only way that you get good at grading or doing any of this. So the more stick time you can get, if you've got a, a company you work for that will allow you some extra time to get in, otherwise find a place where you can go out, get in a machine and just do reps. That's how a dozer operator gets really proficient. The dozer is probably the most complicated piece of machinery, at least I think that in a road grader, mainly because you're building a roadway right in front of you. They're very, they're not forgiving. If you make a mistake, you're going to drive over it. And I like to use the analogy of imagine driving down an interstate and trying to lay asphalt in front of your car while you're driving. That's what being a dozer operator is. So they look like simple machines, uh, which in general they are. It's that washboard effect or just learning how to grade. Now with that said, I'm lined up. I always, for a newbie, slow the thing all the way down. I go down, I'm at the two tick marks, which is the slowest speed setting on this Komatsu. Then I'm dropping my blade. This is where you can adjust one side or the other. Now keep in mind, you do not want to bury this thing in the ground. You'll see right now, if I actually push, this will actually lift my machine up. Now what'll happen is if I do this, the second I go forward, it's gonna dig me into the ground. So that's why you don't want to do that. You just want to have the blade right above the ground and you're slowly trying to build up your grade. So now, again, I'm trying to limit my controls on a joystick to show you how little I'm doing. I'm a big advocate of less is more. The more adjustments you do, the more you're gonna have to, you're gonna get in trouble with this. So I'm watching both tips. And this is why I do love the Komatsu machines. They, you have such a, you're sitting forward so far that you can see your sides. You're trying to build up um, material up to the middle of your blade. The key on dozer, uh, running a dozer, do not try and skim the top. That's where you're gonna get you always want to have a, a load in front of you because you cannot just skim the top. Now, as I'm getting material, I'm watching, and this is where we'll get into more technique in the next video. Don't ever focus on the horizon too. I'm looking out. It's called that kind of seat of the pants feeling on what my machine is doing because I'm trying to make adjustments before I get there as I feel my tracks rolling over it. But I'll see I have material coming out both sides. I can kind of look straight out my horizon and feel what the machine is doing and make subtle little adjustments with that. For this purpose, I'm just gonna slowly come forward and create an upward slope. Again, based on what I do, that's the slope I'm creating. So I just pull back on it to kinda, you'll see my dozer is now gonna drive over that. The end of this, once you're at the end, if you do have material stuck to your blade or a lot, they call it, I call it dumping the blade. Uh, some cat has a blade shake option. Uh, they actually push a button that'll do that. You know, don't come out to you. I might just dump it down like this. Whatever it is, you know, clear your blade if you can. Uh, then you always want to retract it all the way. Now I do recommend pulling it all the way back, especially if you're going up a slope, because what happens when you start? I'm going to back up. As I dip down, you'll see several operators might end up dragging some material back there. Now I'm going reverse again, looking over my shoulder, but again, looking at my camera, I can bump my speed. Generally, reverse is where you're going to make up that time.
Be careful, you're gonna go over little ruts here and kind of drop the back end down. Right there, back and forward. And then I've got, again, if I bump my speed, it does not automatically go back in the Komatsu, so I have to push it back down and drop the blade down. Now, in some of the next videos, uh, and we'll go over, this is not an intelligent machine. And what I mean by that is uh, Komatsu has intelligent machine control, is their brand of what they have. Other uh, manufacturers are different. Usually there's a way to engage it. That's probably, that's the future. For any new operator, learn how to grade by hand. Don't rely on that much technology. Technology, like I said, is a great thing, but you still should know how to do that. With Komatsu, there's a, on the right side, you can't see underneath here, this is where you would engage the automatics. Um, underneath the joystick. So if I click that, it would actually, it, Komatsu is in, integrated right in there. So that's what some of those other buttons are is how to integrate that. Um, and then I'm gonna go forward again, one more time through. Again, I'm gonna bump, I recommend speed slow. There are some tips and tricks on the next one and we already have, we do have a Bulldozer 201 video out there that goes into grading, uh, slot dozing, some more advanced things. You know, it really takes time to be able to get good at grading. Some of the tips, having your blade angle just a little bit. Um, there's, a, again, a lot. I'll cover that in the next video. As you get better, you can start going a little bit faster here. But again, I'm just creating an upward slope, and I'm going to go up and over this thing. To that, I'm going to dump my blade. I'm gonna run this one right to the end. The other thing, dozers are incredibly stable, safe machines. Uh, this is off, I tell some new operators, if you ever, I've seen these things in the mountains or you see them on a hillside, it looks like they're glued to it. The, the dozer is probably one of the least, from a safety perspective, I don't have as many concerns just because all that weight is down below you in between the tracks. You know, an excavator, a wheel loader, um, trying any other machine where you have that weight that you can put up, either up high or far away from you, that, that's a tipping hazard very tough to get in trouble in a dozer um, like this one I can go right to the edge here there are these handles the biggest thing is if you know just when I go over it like that it tips but generally uh, rare I've, I think I've gotten a dozer stuck once or twice but that was in mud we're in a sandy environment here so it's not too bad and I'll ramp it up the final piece I'm just gonna come sideways here and just show the back dragging again I'll go over this in the more advanced video I'm just gonna line up so I can go behind me. So with this, the one final piece is floating when you back drag. Again, uh, I'll preface this. I don't wanna see in all the comments. Operators, again, do not, these guys have been doing it for a while, do not uh, like back dragging. They really think a pro can do it forward. I will agree with you on that, but I still think back dragging has a time and place. It kind of smooths everything out. So if I just set this blade down, you always wanna have it on the ground. And again, I put that in, put it in reverse, backup camera's up, I'm looking behind me. Now, right now, the blade is just floating. So I've got that, I don't know, 1,000 pounds or so that I can still go left or right. And you'll see how it's smoothing out a path right in front of me. And this is where I can go left or right with it. I can also swing, articulate that blade if I'm trying to move material. But to me, it does a good job, and sometimes at the end of a pass, I might do that. The key here at the end, though, do not just, uh, if I pick it up right now, I'm gonna leave a giant pile of dirt. What you wanna do is take it out of float, and then you wanna keep backing up, and slowly, I'm actually pushing down the blade a little bit, I'm letting that track out on its own, so I don't leave a big pile of material there. And you're gonna go until the blade's done. Picking it back up. And we'll go over that more in the next advanced video. Okay, and then finally parking. Neutral. Uh, for parking, it is very, very important to set the blade flat on the ground. You do not want to have, there's a step behind all the blades. So you don't want to be that guy who shuts down and has your blade in the air. Um, so you always set this flat on the ground. Once you're down flat, make sure you're in neutral. I like to let my foot off because it's one final confirmation. If I hear that throttle come up and the machine doesn't move, it can really go either way. You know, the safer way is most really to pull that down because if I'm in neutral right now and I'm at the low idle, it will not move even if I put it. So if I put it in gear right now, the machine won't move. Um, but generally having that. And then the final piece, do not ever, 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 ever get out of a machine with lock levers up. I have seen it done. I know there's still an opening there, but that is your final. That puts this machine in park. There'll be a big parking symbol on the front there. 
no machine my machine is safe uh, I let it for the newer machines they really don't recommend a lot of idle time so uh, let it maybe 15 20 seconds and then I shut the machine down there we go seat belt off the latches all doors are have the latches on it and this one there's a latch right there uh, it, it is uh, <laughs> Kind of funny, I tell people those little dumb things that you don't realize, make sure you know how to get in and out of your machine. I know that sounds really stupid, uh, but I've seen people struggle. You're gonna wanna know that at the beginning just in case something were to happen. So make sure you know how to open these doors. And then three points of contact. Okay, everyone, that was our Bulldozer 101 video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Again, that is our very entry level. So if any of you uh, seasoned vets out there, operators wanna put some comments below others, we've gotten some great feedback on the comments from you guys about tips or tricks you've learned. Guys, stay tuned for the next one. We'll go over some of the more detailed uh, advanced maneuvers on the Bulldozer. Thanks a lot.